Hello, and welcome to Crad COVID Readings, doing my bit to calm the coronavirus craziness by reading my writings. This is now part two of the reading of Right On Sister, which appeared in the 2016 anthology Limbus Inc. Book 3, which was obviously the third Limbus Inc. book. This is a shared world horror anthology that was created by Anne C. Petty, uh, who unfortunately uh, died the same year that the first uh, book came out in 2013. Uh, she edited the first book. She had a story that she had already written for book two. Uh, Brett J. Talley, who also wrote for the first book, took over the editorial reins for book two and also for book three. Um, lots of really cool people contributed to it. Um, Jonathan Mayberry is actually in all three uh, anthologies. And um, you've also got Joseph Nassi, Benjamin Kane Etheridge, um, Joe R. Lansdale, Gary Bronbeck, Harry Shannon, Joe McKinney, David Liss, Laird Barron, and the incomparable Seanan McGuire. Uh, and me. <laughs> and... Uh, and also Brett and Anne uh, wrote stories as well. And um, so this uh, Limbus Inc. is a powerful, mysterious corporation that seeks out people who are out of work, down on their luck, and have unappreciated skills. Uh, and I read part one on Monday. Here is part two. Chapter four of Right On, Sister. The office was the same as it was yesterday, but the view was different. Isabel sat at her desk, and this time she was wearing a green pantsuit that looked just like the maroon one. All the folders were gone, but the other stuff, the weird keyboard and TV thing, and the little rectangular piece of plastic, and the old-fashioned phone, and the two typewriters, were all there. The view out the window seemed the same as it had been yesterday, downtown Manhattan. But it didn't look right to Wanda. There were a bunch of buildings she didn't recognize, and some of them looked wrong. But there was something more basic that was bugging the crap out of her. Isabel put a big pile of papers in front of her. This, Isabel said, is a confidentiality agreement. Once you sign it, I can tell you the full nature of the department. Right on. She started to read the contract. Isabel smiled. I'm impressed. People usually just sign without reading. Yeah, Rondell did that once. Cost him a thousand bucks he didn't have. Ain't letting that happen again, no way, no how. Wanda would never admit this to Isabel, but most of the contract made absolutely no sense to her. But she read the thing anyhow. It took her and Rondell a year to pay that thousand off. Finally, she got to the eleventh and final page of the contract. Groovy, you got a pen? To Wanda's surprise, Isabel opened a drawer in her desk and took out one of those feather quills and a bottle of ink. She unscrewed the bottle, dipped the bottom of the quill pen into the ink, and then handed it to Wanda. She took it with her left hand. This place is out of sight. I'll take that as a compliment. If you want. The line at the end had the words Wanda Wilhelmina Jackson under it. She used the pen to sign just her first and last name. Wilhelmina was Graham's name, so she kept it to honor her. But it was a really stupid name, and she didn't want to admit it to any to it she didn't want to admit to it any more than she had to. She handed the pen back to Isabel. Now what? Isabel placed the pen down on her desk and closed the ink bottle. Then she got up. Come with me, Wanda. As she got up, she finally figured out what was wrong with the view. Where's all the smog at? Excuse me? On the radio this morning, they said there was a smog alert. Days like that, you can't even see across a damn street. But look at that, it's all clear. Then she peered at the window more closely. Where the hell's the Twin Towers? If you'll come with me, I'll be able to answer that question for you. Isabel was now standing near a small door that Wanda hadn't noticed before. It was on the far side of the big set of bookshelves, right next to the window. Ain't no way the world trade disappeared overnight. You'd be surprised, Isabel said grimly. She opened the door, and they went down a long, empty hallway. No windows, no paintings, no lights, but it was all brightly lit anyhow. At the far side was another door, and she opened it up and led Wanda through. As she went in, Isabel said, I will explain everything now, Wanda, but I must ask that you not interrupt me until I'm finished. I'll be saying a lot of things that will surprise you or not make sense to you. So just like every other conversation we've been having the past two days. Isabel smiled, even more so. The room they went into was huge. It wasn't very long, but it was wide. The far wall was only a few feet away, but it was about 50 feet high and it had a whole bunch of little TV screens on it. There were so many, she just couldn't even figure out what was on all of them. It was just too much. As I told you over the phone, Wanda, Limbus Inc. has considerable resources. 
We have branches all over the globe and beyond. Say what? What did I say about interrupting? This will take forever unless you simply wait until I'm finished, all right? Wanda nodded, but her head was spinning. Beyond the globe? One of those resources is a collection of devices that, when combined, allow one to travel through time. Those devices are put to use by the department that now employs you. The use of these devices is severely prescribed, and very few people even know of the department's existence. It's why the NDA, the confidentiality agreement that you signed, was so extensive. No one beyond the dozen or so people who know of the department can ever learn of its existence. As it is, we risk quite a bit every time we use it. So why do you use it? Sorry, didn't mean to interrupt, she added quickly. No, it's actually a reasonable query. Limbus has interests. Sometimes those interests are furthered by manipulating events, which is a simple enough matter to do in the present, much harder to do in other times. But we can, though we do limit it. You asked how we obtained a copy of A Swiftly Tilting Planet when it won't be released until July of this year. In fact, the edition that you picked up was a 2028 edition released on the 50th anniversary of the book's original publication. The view of the New York skyline you saw in my office a few minutes ago was from 2004, just three years after the World Trade Center was destroyed in a terrorist attack. Wanda's jaw fell open, and she only didn't interrupt because she couldn't really believe what she was hearing. Isabel pointed at the big wall with all the TV screens. Wanda saw that they were all from different times. It looked like a bunch of movies, but they were all in full color and good quality. No movie she'd ever seen looked as sharp as what she was seeing right now. What is shown on these walls, Isabel said, is one of our devices, which provides images transmitted by nano cameras that we've sent into various time zones. That's how we knew about your efforts at Hooper's in July of 1977. Wait, hold up, stop. I know you said don't interrupt, but this is messed up. What is? Isabel sounded all confused. You can do all this! Wanda waved her arms at the screens. This is some here seriously heavy stuff! Isabel smiled. I'm aware, believe me. What the hell do you need me for? The technology is very useful, but it's the use of the technology that's important. As I told you from the beginning, your negotiating skills are what is required. Who oh, can Henry Kissinger then? He's a bit too high profile for us, Isabel chuckled. Come with me. They went out another door and into a nice lounge. There were several sofas and chairs. Wanda didn't even wait for Isabel to ask her to sit. She just flopped down on one of the sofas. Isabel sat down next to her. We aren't attempting to change the course of history. The negotiations we require are with people who aren't world changers or heads of state. We just need you to talk people into making a different decision in their lives than they may not have made otherwise. Are you familiar with Ray Bradbury's A Sound of Thunder? Wanda shook her head. Rip Fahrenheit 451 in high school. Well, in that story, people travel back in time, step on a butterfly, and that completely changes the future. We're trying very hard to avoid stepping on any butterflies. We just want to push small things in different directions. Okay. Wanda was feeling more than a little overwhelmed. So what do I gotta do? For now, let's get you something to eat and drink. You look like you could use it. Isabel got up from the sofa. Damn right. Wanda got up too, and Isabel led her out, of, out the door. You'll find we have a fantastic restaurant. It got the most positive Yelp reviews in 2017. What's a Yelp? Chapter 5. Two months later, Wanda had her first assignment. The eight weeks leading up to that was all about the orientation and getting her used to how Limbus did things and how the department worked. She spent all of it in 1978, and man, that was a funky way of thinking about things. So she got to visit Grams a few times. Mama wasn't home any of the times she went. After the third visit home, Grams had said, It's all right, dear. Your mother's just upset that she doesn't get to see you. So when I am home, she ain't? That don't even make sense. It does to Martha. Yeah. But Grams was doing okay, at least, which was what mattered. The assignment was to 2011. Wanda's first question had been, So what, I'm going to the moon or something? Chuckling, Isabel had said, No, not the moon. All your missions will be in New York City. It's one of the ways we deliberately limit the time travel. So someone else gets to go to the moon? Not in 2011. I'm afraid the moon won't be colonized for another century after that. Really? With all them rockets they're shooting up there, you're telling me there ain't no moon colonies by 2000? Afraid not. And there are no flying cars, either. Good. Traffic's bad enough on the ground. She was sent through 
along with the file on her target, an identification that said that Wanda Jackson lived on West 225th Street in the Bronx, in the same projects that Rondell grew up in. She wandered the neighborhood and wasn't sure what freaked her out more, how much it changed, or how much was the same. The streets were a lot cleaner, though not completely clean entirely, and the projects looked just the same. The trees in the courtyards looked better than they did back a few years ago, or really 40 years ago, and biggest of all, there was a large shopping center across 225th that wasn't there in the old days. In fact, there wasn't anything there then, but now there were several stores and a parking lot. The target was a kid who lived in the projects named Javier Mota. He was going to Cardinal Hayes High School, and according to the file, he was trying to decide which college to go to. He'd been accepted by both Columbia and Fordham, and he was having trouble choosing. Wanda's job was to help him choose. Seemed easy enough. Every afternoon after school, Javier went to the coffee shop in the shopping center. It was called Starbucks, and it had an ugly mermaid logo. The shops were all over town, and Wanda couldn't figure out why, because their coffee was nasty. She poured better coffee using yesterday's dishwater at Smith's Diner. After the first few times Wanda and Javier saw each other in the coffee shop, they nodded and smiled to each other, and a few other times when they bumped into each other in the courtyard. She did that, she did that for a few weeks, and when she wasn't doing that, she was having fun with the computer. To her, computers were big, glunky machines with flashing lights and tapes like what you saw on the TV. But in 2011, computers were like an even fancier version of what Isabel had on her desk, a combo of typewriters and TVs. People also had their own phones, so they didn't need to use dirty pay phones if they needed to call somebody when they weren't home. The subways were actually clean and not covered in graffiti. There were twice as many signs, and they were clearer, and the trains hardly ever broke down. Not that it was all great. Things cost a lot more. People in 1978 complained about inflation, but that was nothing compared to 2011. And despite what she said to Isabel, she wished there were flying cars because, because there were considerably more cars on the road, and they were all either much smaller or much bigger than the cars that she was used to. The fashions were insane, too. Everything was too small. The collars, the cuffs, the hair, and the colors weren't nearly bright enough. Plus, everyone had to have a tattoo, apparently. It made everyone look like sailors or prisoners. People definitely dressed stupid in the 21st century. Finally, one day, it was crowded enough in the coffee shop. It was crowded in the coffee shop, excuse me. And so after she got a hot chocolate, the only thing in the place that was drinkable as far as Wanda was concerned, she walked over to Javier's table. Excuse me, mind if I sit here? Javier looked up from his book. He was always reading. Hmm? Oh, hey, it's you. Wanda, I'm Javier. And uh, sure, sure, have a seat. Right on, thanks. Javier left. Right on? What is this, that 70s show or so, all of a sudden? Wanda forced herself to laugh with him and managed not to punch him for that comment. She'd watched half an episode of that show and they pretty much got everything wrong. Made her wonder about all those World War II movies she and Rondell used to watch. Were they all lies, too? What you reading? Rereading, actually, he said. I love to reread books. Anyhow, this is the second Harry Potter. Have you read them? Not yet. The last movie is coming out this summer, so I figured I'd reread the series. They're my second favorite books. Wanda smiled. What's your favorite? Langle's A Wrinkle in Time. No fooling? Heh, those are my favorite too. Read those when I was a kid. I just finished the third book. Well, rereading it, I mean, like you. Nice. Javier put a bookmark into the book and set it down next to his mocha caramel whatever it was. Wanda figured they created all those stupid extra things for the coffee to hide the fact that it tasted like sewage. Oh, hey, I didn't mean to get in the way. I just wanted to sit. Keep reading. Nah, it's all good. I wasn't really reading that close. Why not? Javier leaned back in his chair. I'm having trouble with something, that's all. No big. What's trouble? It's nothing, really. Wanda shrugged. Okay, groovy. That got Javier to laugh again. You really are rocking the 70s lingo. Really worried Wanda that her way of talking was so exotic that people were laughing at her. Why couldn't these 21st century cats talk normal? I, look, the, the problem is I got accepted to two colleges. Okay, so pick one. I can't. He shook his head. It ain't about the money. Columbia is more expensive than Fordham, but Columbia gave me a bigger scholarship. Scholarship, huh? Uh, nice. She was about to say right on, but she didn't want to start that up again. So it costs the same either way. My parents are all, whatever you want, Javi, since it costs the same either way, but they're all just happy I'm going to college, you know? Well, maybe make a list. A what? A list. Write down what's good about each one and what's bad about each one, and whichever one has the longer good list and the shorter bad list, go there. Yeah, okay. 
Javier reached down to his backpack, which was down under his chair. He pulled out a laptop computer and started typing things on it. Okay, let's see. Transportation, don't matter. Got the one train to take me to Columbia. Got the nine bus to take me to Fordham. They both got good English lit departments. That's what you're going to be studying? Javier nodded. I think I want to be a lawyer, but I maybe want to be a writer, too. I mean, I'd love to be like J.K. Rowling or Madeline Langle or even Stephen King. <laughs> Hell, I'd even be Stephanie Meyer. Wanda had no idea who that last one was. Rowling was the name on the book Javier was reading. Okay, so what about law departments? Uh, well, it doesn't matter what you study as an undergrad if you want to go to law school, as long as you have good grades. Okay, what about the place itself? Javier shrugged. They're both nice campuses. Columbia's on the Upper West Side, though. Real nice neighborhood. Wanda already knew that the UWS was, if anything, even nicer than it was in her day, and was pretty damn groovy then. And Fordham? Eh, not so great. But you do have Arthur Avenue, and the food there is amazing. What about the professors? I don't really know them. Ain't Fordham a Catholic school? Javier wins. Not really? They're kind of Catholic? Uh, the, the slogan says, a school in the Jesuit tradition, but a lot of the faculty and administration are Jesuit priests. Wanda didn't know enough about Catholicism to know what a Jesuit was and how they were different from regular Catholics. That good or bad? Well, the Jesuits are really good teachers, but... He sighed. <sighs> okay, here's the thing. Mommy wants me to go to Fordham. I know she says she don't care as long as I go to college, but she wants Fordham because of the Jesuits. But I'm sick of priests. Hayes is all Catholic up in there, but Columbia's a real school, private and stuff. I mean, the Fordham is too, kinda. But, but you don't want a religious education. They make you take theology, man. Wanda chuckled. So go to Columbia, fool. Javier straightened up. I ain't no fool. Look, you obviously don't want to be going to Fordham. Only reason you ain't accepted Columbia yet is because you're afraid of your mother. Well, that's just some nonsense right there. You're the cat that's going to college, not your mother. It ain't going to cost her no more money than Fordham, and you get to go where you want. If she asks, tell her the neighborhood's safer, especially if you're taking the subway late at night. I guess. Look, I ain't gonna tell you that your mother ain't important, but you can't let me letting her control your life, neither. You wanna go to Columbia, so get your behind up out of this coffee shop and go to Columbia. Javier just stared at her for a few seconds. Damn. Anyone ever tell you you're pushy, Wanda? Not twice. They both laughed at that. Look, I'm sorry, but you was having trouble and I told you how to get out of it. You don't gotta listen. I'm just some lady in a coffee shop having a hot chocolate. You wanna take my advice? Groovy. You don't? Just as groovy. Ain't no thing to me. Then she got up and walked out. I don't know what that noise is. Chapter 6. When Wanda returned to 666 Fifth Avenue, Isabel was waiting for her when she came out of the device room. Wanda had thought they needed a name for it that wasn't stupid. Isabel was right there with her, but they needed a boring name because it was secret. I was expecting something a trifle more encouraging. Wanda just stared at her. Say what? I meant, I know what you meant. Look, that's where it's at with me. You don't like it, you shouldn't have hired me. Well, for what it's worth, Javier did decide to go to Columbia, which means he'll meet Aaron Chivovitz and Jamal Jones in college instead of in his 20s, and their boutique tech business will be formed in 2017 rather than 2025 and become far more successful. Since they're a Olympus contractor, this improves our own bottom line quite a bit. Hooray for you. Long as Grams gets paid... Of course. Oh, and as an added bonus, your mother's disability payments are now part of the same direct deposit package that includes your grandmother's social security and the stipend from us. Wanda's eyes went all wide. You mean Mama can't touch it? Not without your grandmother's consent, no. Right on, Wanda smiled. I need a shower, then I want to go visit. I'd say you've earned it. Isabel returned the smile. In fact, you can have the rest of the week off. Report back on Monday. What you talking about? It's Friday. No, it was Friday when you left 2011. It's still the same Tuesday afternoon when you left here. Wanda blinked. Damn! This is going to take some getting used to. It took us all some time to adjust. You will eventually. Enjoy your week off. To be continued on Friday when I will finish it off. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Um, check me out online at decandido.net. My blog is at decandido.wordpress.com. My Patreon is at patreon.com slash cred. Um... I'm doing a big push this week on Patreon. I'm trying to get more, more patrons because I've only got 50 and I should have more, dang it. Um, this week on decantado.wordpress.com, I am running samples from each of the different support tiers, which include movie reviews, cat pictures, TV reviews, excerpts from my work in progress, vignettes featuring my original characters, and first looks at my first drafts. Um, 
So if you're interested, uh, check that out and please consider supporting it. Thank you very much. Stay safe and I'll see you Friday.